Hey guys, it's the Tinker that here. So about a week ago I decided that I will jump on this piehole bandwagon. Uh, not because I particularly hate targeted adverts, I do understand that people need them to pay their expenses, sp uh, sponsoring videos, maintaining websites and whatnot, but I do understand also that not many people like them at my family is no exception. So I decided that okay, piehole seems like a proper solution to solve the ad problem uh, in the whole house. But I didn't really want another Raspberry Pi because there are tons of them. Okay, not tons, but <laughs> way more than there should be. So instead I decided that uh, I will just add Piehole to my ever-growing stack of uh, smart home related Docker containers. So let's get to it and let's see how Piehole works out in my case. First of all, let me introduce the heart of my smart home. So this rig is uh, backed by dual Intel Xeons rocking a total of 46 cores and 46 gigs of RAM. No, just kidding. It's a 12 years old AMD processor with 8 gigs of RAM. You will see. I call it the vault. It pretty much runs everything that is needed for my smart home or my personal projects. And to be honest, it's running out of memory, but that's another story. Anyway, here we go. This is Pihole on Docker Hub. So I'm just showing you this page that the container we will use is nothing fancy, nothing special. It's just an official container provided by the development team behind Pihole. On this page, you will see some settings, but we will go through those anyway. If you're interested, I'm putting the link into the description. Okay, enough chit chat about uh, Pihole on Docker Hub. Let's see the machine we are installing to. So this is Portainer running on the same machine. And as you can see, it already holds a lot of containers, just as I told before. And uh, Portainer is a very useful utility, but uh, out of scope for this video, I'm just using it to check whether we are using any ports that I needed by Pihole. So Pihole requires two ports to work properly. This is uh, described on this page. These are ports 53 and port 80. Now let's log in into our Docker host and let's start putting together that configuration. My preference here is Docker Compose, which is a nice utility. And um, I rather use it than just creating vanilla Docker commands. In this situation, they are basically doing the same, but rather than creating a long command line for Docker, we just create a nice definition file for Docker Compose we can use later on. If you are familiar with the basic concepts of Docker, most of these parameters won't need real explanation. So under ports, we have set those ports that we mentioned. It's worth noting that port 53 needs to be UDP. Under environment, we have the server IP. This is basically the IP address of your Docker host as it is visible on your local network. Then we have DNS1 and DNS2. These are just two servers for uh, resolving domain names. First one is localhost, because on the Docker host we are running Pihole, which acts as a DNS server. The second one should be your routers. If for some reason your router can't act as a DNS server, you can still try using Google's, which is 8888. Now with the volumes part, we are getting to the tricky part. The first entry is just standard working directory for Pihole, but the second one is the real trick. So starting from version 4.0, Pihole doesn't provide a DNS block list anymore. Without this list, Pihole's dockerized version is simply unusable. It won't crash at the start, but its web interface won't be accessible at all. To get around this, you need to either uh, open a terminal inside the running container and run the configuration utility or you can use an external volume to provide your own list. And this is exactly what we are doing with the second volume definition. You will see the contents of the file later on. Now let's try our configuration. So let's just start the whole thing. As you will see, it's almost perfect, but there are two big nasty warnings there. Oh, and by the way, it says the NS resolution is currently unavailable. We can call that bad news, right? 
So to solve this second problem, once again back to the editor and we will need to include another file. This will hold some missing DNS configuration. So let's add this file as a volume and let's try again. As you can see, lights all shiny and booting up perfectly. At this point, all that is left to do is to set up our router to use this newly created PyHole instance as a DNS server. So this setting is depending on your router. I will just show mine. And le voila! We have our own working PyHole installation running inside the Docker container. Finally, here are the two files I've mentioned before. So these are what we have mounted as volumes inside the Docker Compose file. I will put their contents in the description so you don't have to copy from the screen. By the way, the two IP addresses in the second file are your two DNS servers. So you just should have the same values that you have uh, added in the Docker Compose file. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.